Hello, dear Lucia. Lucia Lacara is with us this afternoon. Uh, she's Hi, good afternoon. She's kindly speaking to the Belly Icons platform, and we are really, really delighted to, to see you today. Um, thank you so much for connecting to us, Lucia. We love you. We respect you very much. We um, enjoyed working with you on so many occasions, and we look forward to doing much more in the future in London and other places. So, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Absolutely. Thank you, Lucia. Uh, the first traditional question would be really about uh, this difficult period, uh, this lockdown. Uh, period uh, no one really expected uh, to end up. How has it been for you and um, how you were managing with your, your, with your family, with your wonderful daughter and doing the training and carry on planning the future? How was it for you? Well, like you say, it's been really difficult mostly because it was so unexpected. Nobody would have imagined that we would have arrived in a situation like that. And to be in Spain, we've been confined for eight weeks eight weeks without being able to go out, only to go to the supermarket, not able to walk around. And uh, I was at home with a five-year-old confined with her for eight weeks. So yeah, it's very challenging because, you know, mostly the poor, the poor thing is not used to, she's not used to have me at home so much because I yeah, travel looked, a lot. She was very happy, but she, she had to... Yeah, she was, she was really happy. At the same time, she got really possessive. So basically, I was her personal toy for eight weeks. So I have to even bribe her to have some personal time to do a bar or to do some exercise or, or to even do a phone call. So, yeah, it was a challenge. It, it's, it's been difficult. I felt like those eight weeks, they were like eight months in a certain way. But uh, the, the situation, it was scary. In Spain, it was really scary. So it was needed, I guess. And, and you know, I just, I think, personally, I didn't suffer from being at home, like to not be able to go out. I suffered mostly because there was no insurance about what was going to happen, about, you know, uh, when we could go back to work. And for me, going to work means traveling to another country. Because right now we are, we are working in Germany and we were in a creation, creation process for a new show. So it's not like going to the park that was for me the, the, the thing I wanted or I was expecting. It was to take a flight and go to Germany or, or to go to another place to be able to do my job. And for us dancers, you know, it's, it's difficult because it's one of those jobs that is going to be the last one being actually actually. Uh, be, be able to, to perform and to, to do because, you know, a lot of people, uh, the audience on the stage and the orchestras and it's, uh, it's been difficult to actually stay positive in that sense. There were moments that it was difficult. Now, you know, we are getting better and people are starting to work. You see, even in other countries that they're already doing their limited classes, data today. classes, but that gives you a hope that, you know, we're going to get there slowly. It will be it will be strange at the beginning and the situation is going to be complicated, but we're going to make it and, and we'll soon eventually be all on stage again. Of course, of course. Well, mm. thank you very, very much for sharing even your difficulties because, of course, many of the dancers experienced this and um, some went to really big depression, but we, we have to be strong and positive. And it's yeah. wonderful to know that you, uh, I understand that um, you've started now uh, you're, you're going back to, um, to to creations you started before the crisis and now you continue you're in talks with choreographers and with uh, yeah. your colleagues yeah i w i really needed that for for me it was actually what kept me going all these weeks so was you know once the kid was was in bed we were having like uh, video conferences with choreographers i was working on the production of the of the show that we are doing and talking to theaters and and it was kind of a way to stay related to my job without being able to do the job itself. But it's nice when you cannot dance, it's nice to at least dream about it and, and, and project it, you know, uh, and create that future that you want to, you aim, you're aiming for and, and to make it happen. And it's nice, you know, I mean, at least now we have already dates of performances, so it gives you motivation. Um, I'm, I'm getting very, very excited about this new project you're talking about. Can you share a little bit more? Is it done by one particular choreographer or there's a number of choreographers? Well, 
this is is really really exciting because this is a this is a a, a show that my my partner and I Matthew Golden and I we were we were already planning to do. It was a thing that we were producing ourselves. So we have a production company. We're producing our own show. It's just the two of us. Um, you know, we created the whole concept and we were already starting to to choreograph it. So we have already met with a couple of choreographers and we have already uh, the dates to continue the creation, which was March, April, beginning of May. And we kind of stayed in the middle, you know, it just everything shut down. So it, it, the thing fell down there. But, you know, um, we work as, as permanent artists, uh, perma permanent principal dancers in Dortmund. So they knew of the project and we have already talked to them about it and they were aware. So in this difficult situation, the theaters, they have to reinvent themselves. Yes. So they were thinking about ways of being able to start the season as early as possible, counting all the limitations that they're going to have in relationship to uh, it's impossible to have an orchestra at the beginning because in the orchestra pit, you cannot separate them two meters from each other. No, you cannot. Um, <laughs> you cannot put them a mask either to certain instruments. So it's not going to be possible to have an orchestra. They don't even know how many dancers they're going to be allowed to be on stage. That so they were trying to look for pro. They have to reprogram the whole the whole season, most the whole beginning of the season. So we were thinking, you know, about maybe uh, film our show there uh, and stream it, and then the thing they evolve and uh, with a lot of conversations. So finally, we are doing our premiere there. We are premiering our show in Dortmund. It's going to be the 19th of September. So it's super exciting. At the same time, it's a lot of work that we have to do. The second that they let us out of home. Like the, the second they let us take a flight uh, and go to Germany, we have a still to create and we have um, some filming to do. I think Aftira um, is going to be doing a lot of filming with us because, you know, when two people, only two people on stage, you need, you need filming to transition and to go from one piece to the next. So we are really excited. It's a project that for us is really dear and, and it's something that is personal that we really believe in and that we have created from the initial idea and we are behind every single detail so it's super exciting absolutely and, absolutely. and you, you see even even this uh, uh, separation right now and this crisis um, is not going to kill this beautiful project you're planning you're going ahead and this is fantastic yeah, at the same time in a certain way it has given up more time because it's something that needs a lot of time and when you have <clears throat> sorry when you are very busy performing from here and there you don't have that much time with, like we did. Basically, we've been like talking about it with sharing and exchanging and changing ideas um, and really like doing a lot of brainstorming, which actually has been really, really interesting. And mostly when you leave a situation like we were living, something like this gives you so much hope and so much motivation that I think the, it took a total different meaning and much more special somehow. Of course, of course. Well, I understand that this kind of a production involves um, a team of creative people, choreographers, and of course, uh, composers and yeah. designers, set designers. Um, for this particular production, uh, you you have this team and they come from different countries. How, how actually you uh, work on finding the right people, the right members of the creative team for this particular production? Yeah, somehow, you know, it's, it's funny because in life um, it's very interesting how you meet people on the way that you meet them in a certain way and years later they're going to mean something so much different or special, or important, you know. So basically this team is, is being, is, it has created really naturally. There are people that we wanted to work with or that we've met in very special situation and somehow it always stays there. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have four choreographers in the evening. Uh, one is Yuri Posokov. You may know him. He was my partner in San Francisco for many years, and he became a wonderful uh, choreographer, but I never had the chance to work with him as a choreographer. But always we kept talking through the years, we have to do something and together. We have to comes, yes. And somehow this was the possibility. So in January already, we flew to San Francisco to work with him. And that was the first creation that we did. Um, another choreographer is it's a woman. She's called Anna Hope, and she's Polish. And uh, Matt met her in a very uh, special, funny situation after a performance. And she has 
wonderful ballets, wonderful works that she did, and she's not uh, really known out of Poland yet, but she has extremely amazing talent. And so we already created a couple of pieces with her in Dortmund in, you know, beginning of March, actually, before the whole thing happened. Um, what is beautiful is that all the choreographers are gonna be extremely different from each other. Uh, the next choreographer is called Isan Rustem. Uh, he's actually, he's born in England. Well, he lives in Zurich, but he's the one that actually we are counting days to, basically we are, we are waiting to know all the details about the quarantine in different countries. Uh, so whenever we can fly to Germany without having to be home uh, arrest, in home arrest for two weeks, uh, we'll just fly there and start creating with him. And, uh, and then we'll do a piece of, of Christopher Weldon too at the end of the, of the show. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be four really different, with different styles. And it's, uh, it's really the whole show is, is this, it comes out of this, this situation, you know, this separation, this situation that is um, uncomfortable, that is uh, isolated, but that makes you dream, makes you dream about that better moment that is gonna come. And dancers, when we cannot physically dance, we dance in our heads. So basically it's based a bit on that. It's uh, a dream about what we'll be able to do till we can do it. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all these details. We are really very, very excited. We hope to be able to, to bring it to London as well. That'll be wonderful. But, um, after it, it will be premiered in Germany, obviously Germany definitely will be ahead of many restrictions to be lifted ahead of UK, that's for sure. But mm -hmm. we are very, very hopeful that things will... Yeah, we have already dates in Spain, which is not much better than, than UK. So we'll be performing it in December already here in the Basque Country. Um, you know, we have a lot of dates coming for Spain too. So, you know, Spain and, and UK, we, we have the hope. We have the hope. We'll have to wait a bit more, but hope is always there. Absolutely. Well, um, talking talking about um, partnerships and dancing uh, with someone on the stage. What, what does it mean to you? How how does it relate to you, to your to your soul, to you as as a person? For me, it's extremely important. It's extreme. It's always been. I love dancing. I don't. I love dancing on my own by myself. But for me, finding that partnership that allows you to to just multiply by a million that that those sensations that you can have on on stage it's essential it's way, a few months ago in london uh, we had this sensation with you yeah. on the stage and you, you you remember the reaction of the of the audience it, it was really magical and i th i think that when when a partnership is meant to happen it's it's just so natural it's just so so easy you know, it's like a connection that you can have. You cannot force that kind of chemical connection. Either it happens or it doesn't happen. Of course, you can work a lot with any partner and, and you know, a performance will always... I'm sure you performed uh, because you perform so much. You have different kind of partners, but uh, yeah. it's really yeah. it's such a strong connection. It must be very... Yeah, it's just, and it's, you know, there are some partners that you, you have you can have a really good partnership and it works very well, but then it's also, it's also a question of personalities and it's also a question of character. And uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure when you, when you find the person that actually you find so easy to perform with, but that you can also get along so well with, because it's difficult to work actually, you know. Um, a partnership is something that is not easy in the sense of you have, you want dancers to have a strong personality, but that sometimes is difficult to deal with after. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, everybody has a different way of working, a different way of being. And when you find that person that you get along well, that you enjoy working, that uh, it's a pleasure, um, it's just wonderful. There's nothing better than that, actually. Well, we, we, we've seen and experienced that and enjoyed it very, very much. So this is very special indeed. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're uh, doing a lot of, uh, you've been doing, you are doing lots of contemporary um, choreography. Would you name a few choreographers who particularly been important to you? I'm sure one of them would be Roland Petit because you, you've done, 
you've yeah. done several more most important creations and roles um, by him. How, how, how was this experience working with Roland? Well, you know, I think the most important for me about the whole experience with Roland is that I arrived there being very, very young. I was 18 years old when I went uh, to Marseille. And if one thinks about it, I was way too young for all the roles that he had created. He always created on women, you know. He always had this idea that a woman should look fragile, delicate but be the strong one in all his ballets the woman is really the one that is the strong one and he always had his muse was his wife the jamel which was a tiny very delicate looking but a strong character of a lady so i was a kid i was 18 so one thing that for me changed my career was him coming to me and telling me you are too young for doing all my ballets but I know that you have the natural instinct to do it well. So when you're 18 years old and somebody, it's a huge yeah, somebody like Roland Petit believes on you like that, well, you, I guess you say, well, I better believe in myself because if he believes on me, I'm going to tell him that, you know, he's right in doing so. So I had a wonderful ballet master there that he helped me a lot, Norbert Schmucki. But I have to say that it changed for me the meaning of ballet. I have never performed a role till, till I arrived there. I arrived there and I just entered this wonderful world of drama, of uh, stories, of, um, you know, all these uh, big, big characters and personalities and, and all this, uh, yeah, intensity on stage that I, I was unknown for me and I fell totally in love with it. And that never changed. I, I guess all, all those uh, feelings that I have with every new role that I was getting, I just wanted that to continue. That's why, you know, I changed so many companies and it was not because of the name of the company. I was never into that. I didn't care at all. I was seeking new experiences. I was going to companies that could give me different roles, different styles, different choreographers. So that's why I went to San Francisco five years later um, I, I, I was thinking about coming back and, you know, I was, I was studying around and I saw, you know, in Munich, that theater that had all those ballets that I was so looking forward to perform with all the Krankos, the Macmillans, the, the, the Neumeyers, the, um, all these different stories of these wonderful women, the strong women, fragile women, um, that I wanted to experience. So that I, I only because I think because I experienced all this being so young to challenge myself to to go to be a Carmen at 18 or 19 years old and or to be my first role that I danced there was Notre Dame de Paris I mean with where I have to die uh, hanged from the pole and it was things that you know you have to grow very strongly uh, a stage you know personality and and then I wanted more so then I have, I was so lucky to work with wonderful choreographers and one of them is John Neumeyer, which, you know, when you work with people with, with masters like that, that they, 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 they transmit to you that passion that they have, that dedication, that uh, each step has a meaning. They can explain you what you are telling with that step, what means, what, and, it's wonderful. It, they just make you believe so much in it that you actually, you grow as an artist and, and the experiences that uh, is like you put in your little luggage of, of artistry and it's, it's wonderful. I was really lucky. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lucia. Uh, a very unusual question. Um, how much Spanish do you feel? How much what? Stage. How much Spanish do you feel when you're on the stage? How <laughs> much do you feel <laughs> Spanish at all? Because, of course, the whole world um, expects from Spanish people particular talent for dance, uh, passion and particular feel for, mm -hmm. for dance. Do you do you I, do Spanish or you, you, you're not thinking particularly very much? I No, I, I never thought particularly that I'm a Spanish and I should feel in a certain way for it because of it. I, um, I mean, you have to think that I, I, I could not allow myself in my life to be rooted because I left my home when I was 13 years old. 
And I knew that for in order to do the job I wanted to do the rest of my life, I would have to leave whatever I was dancing. So I left Spain when I was 18 and I never came back till I, you know, till three years ago, three years ago when I left three, four years ago when, well, I still didn't really, I left Munich four years ago, but I stayed in Dortmund only two years ago. I'm more rooted in Spain because of the kid, because, you know, she, whenever I travel far, I leave her here with my mom and then I'm, I'm back and forth going myself, but I could not allow myself to be rooted and, and, sad about not being in my country and I'm Spanish. I'm, I'm me. I don't know what is that. It's a mixture of many things. I guess, you know, uh, well, I, you mean, become... I, I apologize for such a provocative question. Uh, of course, you're, you're a totally interna international artist. Mm. And you're influenced by so many different cultures in, in yeah. the performance you, you, you consider. Mm. Um, which are your favorite uh, countries and stages in the world to dance? Um, what would you say? I, I don't have a favorite one. You know, sometimes it's not about the stage itself. It's about the experience that you had. Uh, of course, I have had, you know, artistically wonderful experience. Like, um, for example, when I performed as um, a guest with uh, Paris Opera Ballet, when I did Carmen of Roland Petit with them, uh, performing in Palais Garnier as part of, you know, the, the, the Paris Opera. It was something that as a dancer you always remember. But I've been in the most wonderful theatres. I've been at the Bolshoi. I've been, I've been in, in theatres that, that they are stunning. But, uh, you know, I think I will give the same importance to perform in front of 2,000 people in, in a mythic theatre about in front of 6,000 people at the Kremlin in Moscow, or about 20 people in a small stage in a small town. Because I have the same respect for the job that I will do. And sometimes, you know, sometimes in the small places, the warmth that you get from the people, that they are so appreciative that you are there, so grateful that you go and they're performing for them. Or in places that you simply, because you have your family or your friends watching, it makes it special. So for me, every show is a special. I always, you have to imagine that the only thing I ever wanted to do since I'm a baby is to perform, is to be a ballerina, but not to be myself in a studio. It's because I love the stage. So yeah. every second, every second that I am on stage for me is special and it's what I always wanted to do. So every second is important. Well, wonderful answer. Thank you so much. And my last um, question would be, what was your biggest lesson from, from this period? What became the most valuable and precious for you? What, what you realized? What well, uh, I, you know, one of the things that, um, one thing that I realized is that I'm, I'm a very, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that is always very organized and I'm very respectful and I always fulfill my, my engagements and my plans and, and I am strict in that sense. And it's actually shocking to realize how everything can change in one second. And that uh, the biggest lesson is to learn that you have to adapt. Sometimes you can only adapt. You have to learn to be patient, which has never been my biggest quality to be patient <laughs> with myself. <laughs> but you have to be patient and you have to stay motivated. Thank God we had this wonderful project that kept us not working physically, but working our minds. Because for me, it's important to work my mind if I cannot work my body. And um, more than learn, it's more, more than anything, I learned that I love doing this so much. And I'm not ready to stop for sure. Because the only thing I kept thinking is to be able to go back. <laughs> well, it will happen soon. It will happen yeah. soon. Thank you so, so much for Thank you. with us today, for sharing such uh, inspirational things. Um, it's such an enjoyable meeting. Thank that was a pleasure. And we really, really look forward uh, to your premiere, to working with you again, and to welcoming you in London and seeing you very soon. Take great Absolutely. care and all the best, all the best for uh, the biggest success for this forthcoming project and for everything else, what, what is in the plan. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.